Hello, Facebook Live. Hi, everybody. I know you have been eagerly waiting for this conversation. I've been getting text messages going, what's going on? So hopefully you are seeing this now and you are in and you are ready. So today we are talking to Timothy Flannery. Is that correct, Tim? Sorry. That's correct. Yes. Now, Timothy is a lawyer. And I put out a message out on Facebook and I said, I'm still waiting for somebody who is willing to come on and have a conversation, specifically a male. So I'm still looking for a male to come on and have a conversation with me about my no kissing for three months rule. Because, you know, as much as I tell women, this is how you need to go about finding a relationship if you've had trouble in the past and you want to have a different behavior in order to gain a different outcome. And Timothy popped up and he said, anytime. And I love that challenge. I love that Timothy's a lawyer. I love that he's bringing a debating method to this conversation because ladies, you're gonna face this, uh, either from the person sitting across from you on a date or when you bring this up in conversation. And I want you to hear this conversation because I want you to understand how you yourself can address the questions that you're gonna get. Um, so Tim, I have yeah. you on speakerphone right now. Um, I'm hoping everybody can hear you. Do you wanna just say hi and maybe just a little bit about yourself? Uh, hello everybody, I'm sorry about the technical difficulty. Um, I, uh, I'm a lawyer, yes, practice here in, in the Kitchener Waterloo area, but uh, do lots of stuff around Canada as well and the United States. I'm dual citizen. Uh, I've lived in the United States and Canada, and as a result, I'm back and forth. I also am involved politically with uh, one of the political parties here in Canada and uh, the Democratic Party, in, and I, I had the Democratic Association up here in Kitchen Waterloo. Um, having said that, I'm uh, the father of three boys. Uh, uh, one of them lives in New York. He is the, I'm proud to say, director of Central Park. So he got a, an incredible job. He's 32. I have another fellow who is my youngest one at 27. He has his own radio station show, uh, Morning Man, in Saskatchewan, northern Saskatchewan. He likes to say he's the voice of North Saskatchewan. Uh, I pity them if he is, but in any event, that's what he's doing. And then my uh, my middle one is the one who is just I'm sadly disappointed in. He only has a PhD and in nanotechnology and quantum mechanics and physics. So he's in Waterloo currently. Uh, I'm not sure where he's going to end up. It looks like Palo Alto though in California. So I raised those boys. I was uh, divorced uh, in custody, uh, raised them, not on my own, their, their mother was a good mother and, and uh, assisted greatly. And uh, so in any event, so I, I've, I've had experiences uh, with a number of relationships, uh, certainly after my divorce, um, I, I took a bit of a hiatus because of raising those boys. But after that, uh, you know, again, a number in, in different stages of life too, you know, in my twenties and thirties, forties, fifties, I've, I've had different relationships. So, um, this was an interesting, uh, topic and, uh, you seem to be an interesting person with interesting ideas. And I thought, well, okay, let's see what we can do there. Right. So just so that we clarify so that everybody understands what your opinion is uh, about this no kissing for three months rule. Can you tell us what your thoughts are about this? Uh, the, 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 the philosophy you're putting forward or espousing, if I can understand it correctly, so I'll just reflect it a bit, is that you would go on a date with someone, but you would attach certain rules to it um, amongst them. No kissing, uh, I take it no sexual activity, uh, for a period, a defined period. You've said, I think, in my opinion, a little arbitrarily and capriciously, three months, but whatever. Uh, it could be four, it could be three months in a day, it could be two months and 6.4 days, whatever. Uh, but you've set these rules, uh, and so I found that interesting, but mm, also problematic. 
Okay. Um, so, I mean, most people by now uh, at this point know um, sort of my side of it, and and we'll get we'll get more into my side as we sort of uh, sort of evolve this conversation. Um, why do you think it's problematic for a woman to want to wait three months for a first kiss when she's first dating somebody? Well, if the goal is uh, that uh, the date is going to uh, be geared towards meeting someone and furthering a relationship so that there's maybe a second, third, fourth, or what have you date, um, that might be problematic. But if, if it's not for that purpose, um, you know, then, then it's not. I mean, if it's just to go out and have coffee with someone, there's no problem. But if someone is, is trying to, in a romantic way, hook up with someone in a long-term relationship, uh, I would say that's going to be problematic. And, and one of the reasons is it's rule-driven, which is uh, autocratic, really, uh, very unusual, especially when you have something like this kind of thing, a relationship issue. Uh, it should be free-flowing, it should be natural, it should take its own course. It should be with both people driving the ship and not with a rule hanging over their head, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm not sure there's any basis for uh, anywhere in science, in philosophy, in religion, etc. Um, so uh, that's why I would say it's problematic. It will get in the way um, of, of the naturally occurring chemistry between people and the flow of the relationship itself right uh have you did you watch my last conversation you had a show on i saw part of it okay i can't remember his name but yes i believe it uh if that's the last one yes on the same topic right right yes okay so okay just just so that i know um you know sort of how how much you know about what i what i might say back to to what you said um, so you feel that when a woman is, is, uh, looking for a relationship and she meets somebody, they arrange a date, they go on a date and on that date, she says, just so you know, uh, I don't want to kiss anybody I don't know. And so for me, three months is a perfect amount of time to get to know somebody. It's not too short. It's not too long. And, you know, here we are today. Let me take out my phone, flip out the calendar, go forward three months, point to the date three months from today. And, and if we still want to kiss on that date, then we'll have our first kiss. You think that would, that would cause a problem for her? Well, it, it may with many uh, individuals. It may not with some guys. Mm -hmm. I know if it were me, I probably would say to myself, oh, oh boy, wow and try to terminate this immediately or, or as soon as possible. Yeah. Being polite and not not being, trying to, to be soft about it and make sure she, her feelings aren't hurt. But it would send just terrible messages to me about control issues and arbitrary decision making. And, uh, you know, oh my, yeah. if, there's, if there's a rule out of the gate and we haven't even talked, oh boy, this is not a good road to go on. So you, you don't think it makes any sense at all for a woman to say, I want to wait to know you better before we exchange a first kiss? Well, that's a little different now. You said no better. Well, no better. Now, and you, and you so believe, that's a quantum leap for you. You went from three months to it, It's actually to not. See, better. see. Um, because you can know someone better after five, ten minutes, or you can get to know someone better after a day. But, but you don't, let me, wait, Tim, yes, 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 I've set three months because I might talk to you for five minutes, but how much do I know about you in five minutes? I might talk to you for an entire day, but how much do I know you about know. you? That would be up to you to decide, and you see, what you've removed is that freedom of thought and that, that freedom to decide on your own. You've shackled by way of rules. Right. That's a problem. That's okay. So shackled by way of rules, and then yeah, see so the rules way are, uh, are a terrible shackle. They right. they remove discretion. They remove freedom of 
choice. They they remove the free flow of thought, no. feeling, etc. You always have the uh, choice oh, yes. to leave. You oh, yeah. you Girls do that all the time. You oh my gosh. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, you gotta give me some time to talk too. You go ahead. Okay. Um so now there's always freedom because in this conversation what she says to him is you know like in the exchange that we had with rj he said are we in a relationship during this time and the answer is no this is you are not in a committed relationship during that three month period he said can i go have sex with other people during this time and the answer is absolutely if that's what you want to do you are free to do that so there is absolute freedom of choice. What the woman is saying in this conversation is absolutely clear. I'm not telling you what to do. You are free to do what you want. I am letting you know that in my method for finding a long-term partner, part of that strategy is waiting to know somebody at least three months because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior and I need to string together a series of behaviors in order to feel comfortable with an understanding of who you are. But I thought the strategy was keying in on these two people and not you that you're free to have sex with everybody in the meantime. The, the, the person that she's talking to when she's having this conversation, which instead of a kiss, like when she feels, and it might not happen on the first date, when she feels i want to see where this goes because i feel like i like him enough to explore the potential of a relationship instead of a kiss to see where it goes she has a conversation well i have, I have no problem with that that's what she wants to do mm -hmm. what i have a problem with is that there's a prohibition of of anything else but a conversation or or uh, of any particular activity, you've named kissing, for instance, but right. that's the problem. That prohibition, that rule, that's a control issue. By the way, uh, kissing is uh, seen to be linked, especially in most cultures, at least 90% of human beings view this as the case, according to some Rutgers uh, surveys, but uh, that it, it is linked to relationships, romantic relationships relationships and our mating and so uh, it is a necessary component why one would ever want to eliminate that by way of rules for a particular defined period of time uh, without both by the way both parties not an arbitrarily uh, decided upon one person party deciding it would be beyond me it would be a control issue and I would be as I said in a polite way not wanting to hurt anyone's feelings but out the door quickly Mm -hmm. I, I do agree that, uh, you know, this is a rule that does require control because our impulse when we're attracted to somebody is to have that kiss. What happens in the female brain when that kiss happens, and you can research this, so there, uh, there's a chemical that happens. So, you know, like our, our bodies are driven by certain chemicals like uh, uh, oxy oxytocin makes us feel warm and fuzzy, dopamine yeah. is our reward chemical. Yeah. So phenylethylamine is the chemical that's created during a kiss. What it does, well, really wait, no, wait, 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 Tim, wax. wait a second. It's my, it is, wait, it wait, 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 Tim, to, let me explain. No research that Tim, that let me explain the, this. The and then, and then you can tell me what you think about it. Just and so you know, this is going to happen with some people. So oxytocin is amongst them, although there's some research that says that oxytocin is reduced in females. Uh, but increase in, in males. There's cortisol, uh, which is uh, unfortunately in, increases stress at times, and, and that has to do with, gee, maybe I'm kissing in a in a church and I feel stress. <laughs> so you're going to have a little cortisol happen there. Um, uh, dopamine, you know, you know, there, there's, but but the the amino acid that you've been um, you'll have to provide me that research because uh, I, and I have a, by the way, I do environmental law, environmental science. I have degrees. I went to the University of Michigan. I, so I, I, I've taken the chemistry and the double chemistry known as biochemistry. Uh, I don't know of any research. Uh, look at the Kirschenbaum study. That's the most recent one on the science of guessing. Okay. You know so Kim, uh, Tim, so yeah. just, just to give me a chance to respond to what you're saying. 
Sure. Uh, when you speak to women, so you don't, you don't need, you don't, you do not even need to take my science. You don't need to take my research. You, you don't need to subscribe to that at all. You, that is fully your choice. Know, but, your but wait a second. Wait, I'm, I'm just so you know, I'm not done yet. All you need to do is ask women that you know after you've had a first kiss. So this is the question you pose to them. So you can do some additional research via a, a sociological type of research. So go to women and say, when you've had a first kiss, will you then date and kiss somebody else at the same time that you're kissing that one person? Most women will say no. And so what happens in a sociological context, now we can get beyond the chemical science. Let's just toss that right out the window. Let's just speak to women's experience and what they do. So most women, when they have that first kiss, if the next day or while they're seeing and kissing that one person, if somebody else comes along and says, can I take you out? She will say, no, I'm seeing somebody. So what has happened is that first kiss has bonded her and committed her mentally, emotionally, physically to that one person. What I tell women to do is do not commit to a stranger. And in order to ensure that you're not committing to a stranger and your mind isn't caught up wondering, is it time? I don't know. It's feeling right, but not right now. I'm not sure. When you set a specific date, what it does is it frees your mind because you know up until that date, you don't even need to think about kissing. Well, again, uh, certainly my experience has been a little different about women. Um, I'm not sure that, um, you know, what you said may have been more applicable 50 years ago. I'm not so sure these days and certainly not my circles. Um, and then not my experience at all. <laughs> in, in fact, uh, there's almost been a move towards uh, more of the traditional male um, response from females these days. But in any event, um, so I, I would take issue with that sociologically as well. I, and I would go back to Cheryl Kirstenbaum's uh, studies because she does mix uh, uh, sociology into it as well. So you may, you may be... Uh, you may benefit from looking at that. That's the, the latest, greatest uh, publication and, and studies on this. She's gone to New York University and, and uh, uh, borrowed their research, and uh, it, it, it's a great, it's a great read. I would, I would recommend it. But so what I'm saying is, um, this first kiss is not that magical. Let's not put. Oh wait, 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 wait! Uh, I disagree with that because. It does not affect you the same way it affects women. Like, I want you to think about your fertility cycle first. Sure wait, wait, wait. Uh, think about, wait, Tim, I'm not done yet. Think about your fertility cycle, which is on 24 7 versus a woman's yeah, fertility cycle. With, wait, uh, Tim, I'm, I, if, if, Tim, if you're not going to let me talk, I'm honestly just going to get off the phone. So I'm going to give you the choice. Either we're going to take turns talking or we're just not going to have this conversation. So when you okay. think about your fertility cycle, which is on 24 seven versus a woman's fertility cycle, which takes a break, biologically, we are not made the same. So you, you think that a kiss affects people in a certain way, but the fact is a kiss does not affect a female the same way it affects a male. Yeah, I, th I think you're mixing up fertility cycles with sexual attraction. And, no, and I'm, I, I'm not debating sexual attraction right now. The, the fact is, but, but, the reason why she's having the conversation is because there's sexual attraction. The reason why she's having a conversation is because she wants to not give in to her impulses and she wants to use her logic instead. But, but are you trying to suggest that she's only going to do this when she's all be like, no, I'm suggesting that she is aware that a first kiss will bond and commit her to somebody. And in order to circumvent that and make a relationship decision that is based on information and not just on chemistry, abstaining from a first kiss for three months to observe behavior first puts her in a better position of choosing the right partner. Well, bond and commit after one kiss, Chantal, is... It's, I know you... 
No, 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 no. I know that it's difficult for you to understand because it doesn't affect you the same way being a male, but talking to women will give you more insight. Yes, well, I've talked to a lot of women in the But have you asked them specifically when you kiss somebody, like not the women you've been with, not the ones that have cheated on you maybe, but other women, have you asked them, hey, let me just ask you out of curiosity, when you go out with somebody and you have a first kiss and then somebody else asks you out, do you say I'm seeing somebody or do you date and kiss more than one man at a time? Well, I've never put that question directly to them, but, yes. but it, it's been my experience. That, no, but not uh, your experience. Uh, I, I want you to go study. Them seeing them and understanding their, and hearing from others what their mm-hmm. lifestyle has been. Yeah. Um, no, there's been no commitment. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, one kiss. I, I do talk to people like you often enough who've had bad experiences and, and just carry that forward and sort of generalize it into the population. Yeah, even in my personal experience, I haven't uh, found that. I mean, look, uh, it, it's a nice gesture, it's a, it's a, but to overemphasize it is also, I think, equally dangerous. So, uh, you know, you kiss, it's a sign of affection. It's uh, a first... Uh, it's not uh, the only sign of affection. Uh, but, but it's not uh, the be-it-all, end-all. It's not, it's not the high-water mark uh, that now something kicks in and there's a commitment and that. Oh my gosh. Yes, I there mean, is. Uh, yeah, that's that's, that's, that's the just, whole uh, point. That is the whole point. I've never met has ever said that to me. You haven't had the conversation. You haven't specifically asked her. No, but I've watched them and, and, and I see their activity and I've heard from others. And certainly uh, I'm not blind and uh, I just haven't seen that at all. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry, our, our life experiences are different that way. Vastly. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, very vastly different. Yes. So, you know, and I'm not sure the rationale as to why someone would be thinking there's such a commitment. And, I and I, I get that. Guess. Yeah, I, I understand that, um, you know, and, no, and I do, I do see that a lot I mean, from males because... It, can, you, can you name rationally why that would be? Okay, let me repeat. In order to not commit to a stranger, one should observe their behavior over a period of time. Since kissing is committing to women, then not kissing gives them a more rational mindset to observe that behavior. And since they're not kissing anybody, they are actually free, emotionally free, to date more than one man at a time. But you, you've said this three months thing, and that's, yes. that's the problem, and I've always said. So if you said uh, to me, as you just did, well, to get to know someone, and there's a familiarity and a, and a comfort level that comes with that, all of that is great, and we're great. We're on the same ground there. Yeah. My problem is your arbitrary uh, three months and the control issues that fall. Right. Well, you call it control issues. I, I call yes, it self-control. It's, that. it's not controlling you because she, she says to him, you're free to do what you want. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm looking for a long-term relationship. This is the way I'm going about it. So what she's exercising is self-control. She's resisting her impulses. She's finding him attractive. She does want to see where this goes. But she's saying, I'm not going to do something that's going to commit me before I know who I'm committing to. Yeah, I, I think as you admitted earlier, it is a control issue and it's a control of the relationship. And so, um, obviously, for me, I'd be out the door. That, that would be fine. Way. I mean, I yes. would not want to hurt someone's feelings, but yeah. it would be a warning sign, a red light would go yeah. off that, oh my, this is a person that not only that, that apparently needs these kinds of rules, and they're like, oh dear, this speaks loudly and clearly to other problems in other areas. You know, it's like a traffic cop. They have the discretion to issue a ticket or not. But we find that literalists, people that, uh, that to rely on rules, they do that because they don't trust themselves, that they don't understand all of the other factors, or they don't they find it overwhelming, all the decision making, all the, and so what do they do? They rely on a rule. It makes life simple. I get that. But again, it's not the, it's not the most advantageous situation. It's not the one where they can experience the most and get the most out of life. It's oh, I disagree. Oh, Tim. Oh, Tim. Let, let me tell you, if you met my husband, 
you would understand why I fully disagree with you right there. And, and one of the things that I teach her is the ones who want to walk away because for them, you know, what I call selfish short-term thinkers, if I'm not getting what I want when I want it, I am out of here. I teach my women to let them go so that they stay open for the generous long-term thinker who's going to say, you know what, I understand what you're saying, I understand your goals, I fully support your goals, let's get to know each other. It might be torturous at times because I'm attracted to you too, but I'm also looking for a long-term partner and I do want to make sure that I'm committing to somebody that I'm compatible with and I get it. If we get to know each other better, we're going to understand better whether or not we're compatible. And I think, I think we're going to leave it at that. Uh, he, he's probably a very nice guy. He's a wonderful he's man. Very nice. And if you were attracted to one another, it speaks a lot to both of you. You're and we and nice we did woman. wait for that first kiss. But but uh, the control issue would speak loudly and clearly to me, and I could go on. Certainly, and, uh, that that's no how, how you would see it. Is, and I, and I would much more uh, good for him if he's uh, yes. that's the path that he chooses. But for me, and I think many others, we would mm -hmm. be. Very Many others. And again, this is a, in long-term thinking and a long-term relationship. You know, it's funny that you say that because that's exactly the concern that would run through, I think, many people's brains. And they would go, wow, this person wants rules like this? So yeah. I'm out of here. And they're certainly allowed to think that. Like so Tim? I'm gonna I'm gonna um, end this now. I think I think we both fully understand where the other person is coming from. I really appreciate having this conversation with you. I'm gonna let you go, and I'm gonna continue the feed and finish it off with my ladies. Thank you so much, and I really hope you have a great night. You as well, Chantel. Thank you very much. Thank it's been you. A bye bye. Okay, so you heard what he said adamantly what that says is whoa that's control issue there's no way i want to deal with that and he wasn't hearing that what it was was not control over him it was self-control and again ladies you will come across this from time to time and it's going to be maybe a difficult uncomfortable challenging situation these are definitely the ones that you need to let go of because when he says you're being too controlling, really what he's saying is I don't want you to tell me what to do. And this is not a fair and equal exchange in that case because what he's saying is what matters to you doesn't matter to me. And he will leave and he said there's a lot of people that will leave that situation and I fully agree and this is the reason why this rule works because there are so many males out there there are a lot that are going to be attracted to you this is the vetting process this is how you separate the selfish short-term thinkers if I don't get that kiss when I want it I'm out of here those ones can go because those ones don't support you they don't support your growth, they don't support your goals, they don't support what you want for yourself. And so you let them go and the majority will go. I say to my ladies, yes, the guys, selfish short-term thinkers will leave. You let them go. You say, whoo, thank God I didn't kiss that one. And what is left is the space for the right one to step into and go, wow, you know, I gotta tell you that rule sucks. But, I like you too. I like what I see in you. It's not just what I can get when I can get it. It's your character. It's your personality. It's your smile. I don't know what it is. I can't define it yet, but I'm not going anywhere. Even though you're telling me you're not going to kiss me for three months, you show me the date on the calendar because you are so sure that you're waiting for a specific date for a first kiss. You're not leaving it up in the air. You're not saying, you know, when it feels right, so that it's constantly gnawing away at your mind and distracting you from the moment, distracting you from getting to know him. I understand that you want some time and space to get to know me, to feel better about me, to feel like when we do commit, we actually understand who we are and how we work together. That's the one that you're waiting for. That's the one that you want to leave the space in. You do not want to be caught up with the one who says, you have to give me what I want, when I want it. You want to be with the one who says, I am your partner and I am by your side. And you know what? 
I can overcome an obstacle with you. And if the first one is I got to get to know you, I can do that. So let's look at some comments here. We got Margot Chantal, it's self-respect. Sometimes people can't hear what you're saying. It's awesome. It's true. And, and sometimes, you know, you just, you have to let the moment happen and then walk away from it with grace and say, you know what? I know what I offer. I know who I am. I know what I can give. And I'm waiting for somebody who wants to hear the words coming out of my mouth. I'm waiting for somebody who wants a glimpse into my heart and who's willing to overcome an obstacle to get deeper into my soul and be the man who's by my side. So ladies, gentlemen, my man fans, I know you're out there and I love you. It's amazing, guys. I hear from women who talk to me because they love what I say, they love what I'm teaching because it speaks to them as the generous, long-term thinking, hard-working man that they are. So I'm going to sign off for today. You know I love you. So much love for you. I see the happy bubbles. Thank you, you guys. And I will talk to you soon.